take away anything from three cups of tea, other than, of course, the obvious fact that one person indisputably can make a difference. And you simply, you, you can't ever make the contrary argument after getting to know the story of Greg Mortensen. I hope you'll take away uh, the lesson in this page or so that I'm going to read to you now. In the fall of 2003, at the desk of his aviation company in Rawalpindi, as he tried to arrange a flight from Mortensen to northern Afghanistan, where the American hoped to begin building schools, the bull-like Brigadier General Oz ruminated on the importance of educating all the region's children and the progress America was making in the war on terror. Bashir paused to watch a live CNN feed from Baghdad, staring at a small video window and set into the flight manifest scrolling down his monitor. Bashir was struck silent by the images of wailing Iraqi women carrying children's bodies out of the rubble of a bombed building. As he studied the screen, Bashir's bullish shoulders slumped. People like me are America's best friends in the region, he said at last, shaking his head ruefully. I'm a moderate Muslim, an educated man, Bashir said. But watching this, even I could become a jihadi. How can Americans say they're making themselves safer? Bashir asked, struggling not to direct his anger toward the large American target on the other side of his desk. Your President Bush has done a wonderful job of uniting one billion Muslims against America for the next 200 years. Well, Osama had something to do with it too, Mortensen said. Osama! The sheer Lord. Osama is not a product of Pakistan or Afghanistan. He's a creation of America. Because of America, Osama is in every home. As a military man, I know you can never fight and win against someone who can shoot at you once and then run off and hide while you have to remain eternally on guard. You have to attack the source of your enemy's strength. In America's case, that's not Osama or Saddam or anyone else. The enemy is ignorance. The only way to defeat it is to build relationships with these people, to draw them into the modern world with education and business. Otherwise, the fight will go on forever. Bashir took a breath and peered back through his tiny window to Baghdad, where a camera crew was filming radicalized young Iraqi men shaking their fists and firing their weapons into the air after setting off a roadside bomb. <sighs> Sorry, sir, Bashir said. I'm really inexcusably rude. Of course, you know all this as well as I do. Shall we have lunch? And then Bashir pushed a button on his intercom and asked his lieutenant to send in the tubs of Kentucky Fried Chicken he'd ordered, especially for his American guests. <laughs>